So we're going to be looking at table 220.55, demand factors for household cooking appliances over one and three quarter kilowatts. This is a great place to start, especially for the Florida electrical contractors exam. I would say that this is the table that you're going to use more than any others on the exam. Um, so, so keep that in mind. And, um, the first thing we need to look at, and by the way, this on, on in the 2020 code, it's on page 78, 70-78, 220.55. If for some reason you're hearing this video and it's not on that page or it's not this exact table, I doubt seriously these numbers have changed. The, the 2017 is the same, and I imagine when it gets to the 2023 that this will change. But either way... Um, for the 2020 code, it's uh, table 220.55, demand factors for household cooking appliances over uh, one and three quarter kilowatts. All right, so the, this got the four columns. So let's look at the four columns. You've got the number of appliances. Okay, that's the number of appliances we're talking about. Um, column A is when you're dealing with an appliance that is less than three and a half kilowatts. All right, um, and that is over in one and three quarters and less than three and a half kilowatts. And it's expressed as a percent. And this is important because not all of these columns are expressed as a percent, which can make it very confusing if you don't have somebody walk you through this thing. Okay. So then we go column B and that's between three and a half and eight and three quarter kilowatts. And it's also expressed as a percent. All right. Um, so column number one is the number of appliances you're dealing with. Column number two is somewhere over three, one and three quarters and less than three and a half kilowatts. Column B is three and a half um, to eight and three quarters. And now column C is anything over eight and three quarters. And it's expressed in kilowatts. And that's what can be confusing. We're no longer talking about percent. We're talking about kilowatts. And in the table itself, it actually says not over 12 kilowatts. I don't like it that it says that because it actually is for over 12 kilowatts. You just got to do a little bit of math. You are going to use that column for over 12 kilowatts. If they, if I asked, if they asked me, I would say that would be something that could change because that can be confusing. All right. And then they have all these notes. Oh my gosh. Trying to get through these notes. They are, they can really be intimidating. Okay. So we might as well just take them one at a time. Um, so note number one. So if you're dealing with over 12 kilowatts, now it says up to 27 kilowatts, which is fine. Now you're not going to have over 27. So don't worry about that. But if it's over 12 kilowatts, all right, we're going to add 5% to the kilowatt rating in column C for each kilowatt over 12. Wow. Now that sounds complicated, but it's really not. All right, we're going to, I'm going to walk you right through that. So let's say you have a 14 kilowatt uh, appliance, right? Well, it, and then let's just say we're dealing with one. So it's one appliance. It's one appliance, left-hand column, one appliance. We go over to column C and we pull out eight. Okay. Eight is the number off the table. All right. So we start with eight. Now, since it is a 14 kilowatt appliance, it's two kilowatts over 12. So it's, we're going to increase that eight by 10%, two times 5%, 10%. So we take 8 plus 10%, and it would be 8.8, .8. all right? And we're going to do some more of that. So if, that, if you didn't quite follow that, that's fine. Okay, so note 2, okay? Now this is for over 8 and 3 quarters through 27, so that means we're going to be using column C of unequal ratings. We're not even going to talk about that right now because it takes this column C kilowatts over 12 and makes it even more complicated than it already is. And I don't think you're going to need to know that. All right. So I'm not really going to be discussing that at this point. I might do another presentation later where we talk about that, but I don't think you're going to need it for the Florida 
electrical exam. So we'll put that on hold for a minute. Let's not worry about that. Note one is very important. You've got to be able to do this. Note two, we're not going to worry about that right now. Note three is, is important. Okay, so these are, we're working with our, you know, our appliances that are between uh, uh, one and three quarter and, and eight and three quarter. We're going to add the name plates together and then multiply the percentage in the appropriate column. For instance, if it was a three kilowatt and we had uh, uh, three of them, it would be three times three, which is nine kilowatts. And then we would go to the column where it says, um, three appliances and it would be 70%. So it would be 70% of that nine kilowatts. Okay, whatever that ends up being. Okay, um, and we're gonna do more of these. So just kind of hang in there with that. And then you, you've got, you, you, could have, you could have some appliances in column A and some appliances in column B. And you gotta do them separately. You gotta do the column A appliances together. Then you have to do the column B appliances, okay? And then add them together if it's all on the same feeder or, or service okay all right um, and then and we'll talk about that some more we're gonna do we're gonna do some calculations here so just kind of hang in there if it's starting to get a little too complicated just kind of hang in there it's not that big of a deal all right note four is about branch calculations branch circuits so we're not even talking about feeder uh, and service here we're talking about branch calculations and I don't think you're gonna need that one either so I'm not gonna deal with that in this presentation we might do that, like I said, in a, in a future presentation where it gets a little more complicated. But for the basics and for the exam that you're going to be taking, I think you're only going to really need to know uh, note one and note three. We're not going to worry about our branch. And then note five is interesting because um, it's not very complicated. It's pretty simple. It just applies to instructional programs as well. All right, so if they say, you know, which can be a little confusing if you didn't realize this, because you might be tempted if they were talking about it was in some type of a home ec class or something like that, you might say, well, that sounds commercial to me. Well, it's not commercial. You don't go to the, you go, you don't go to what they call the other than dwelling. We're just, just going to uh, a, a home ec class or an instructional institution is figured exactly the same as a dwelling. All right, so that's interesting. So we're going to move along just a little bit here. Hopefully you've seen these before and this is a review, but if not, that's fine too. Okay, so for all the questions in this section we're going to talk about, here's what we're going to be considering. We're going to say we're working on a four-unit residential apartment building. We've got four units. We are calculating the demand for the service and the feeders. OK, so this is what we're doing. So you don't you know, the whole reason that we are doing this adjustment is because this is residential and we know that we're not going to be using all of our cooking equipment all the time. Right. And usually when we use it, we're not going to use all of it. We're just going to use one or the other. And not everybody in the whole building is going to be using it at the same time. So we get to reduce the size of the feeders and the service based on that right okay probably already knew that but just thought i'd throw that out there for anybody who's really really green and uh and and taking this okay so we're gonna say that the units each will receive a 10 kilowatt range what will be the demand for the service and the feeders okay so knowing that we're going to be using column one worth the number of of appliances we should know the number of appliances now okay and uh and and then and then look for the uh look for the correct um number in item c in column c and hit the pause button and see if you can figure it out then come on back and did you get 17 it should be 17 kilowatts okay so simply we're going to start with four appliances. Remember, we've got four. It's four units. All right. Um, and it is over eight and three quarters. So we got to use column C. Now, it's not over 12. So we don't have to worry about the 5% thing because it's not over 12. Right. So we have five, four appliances. We follow it over to column C. When calculating the conductor size needed, it's 17 kilowatt. That's the kilowatts that we're going to have to consider for the four, four ranges when we are sizing the service and the feeders. 
That's pretty simple. Okay. Of course, you can imagine we're now we're going to move on to one that gets a little more complicated. All right. We didn't have to do any adjustment. We just had to read that right off the table. Okay. So now we're going to have to do an adjustment. All right. Now the units will receive let's let's say in this scenario the units are going to receive a 15 kilowatt range what will be the demand for the service in the feeders remember that note one for every kilowatt over 12 we have to add five percent to the value in column c all right so hit that pause button do a little calculation, see if you can come back and get it right. Okay, did you get 19.55 kilowatts? So here's how we did that. Since we were at 15, we had to get the difference between how we had to figure out how many kilowatts it was above 12. So it's 15 minus 12 is 3. Now it's 5% for each kilowatt over 12. 3 times 5 is 15. So column C will be increased by 15%. So we go to column C, once again, four ranges, okay, four, unit, four appliances. Uh, we follow over to column C, we get 17, we add 15%, we get 19.55 kilowatts. Now I've got this how about that calculator. Now this is the reason I'm asking this. When I use my calculator, I just hit 17, Clear it out, first of all. Try to get in the habit of clearing it all out when you get started. Clear it out. 17 plus, hit the plus sign, 15 and hit the percent. And then that'll give you your answer if you've got the right kind of calculator. Some calculators, you have to go 17 plus 15, hit the percent key, and then hit the equal sign. If that's the type of calculator you have, you need to realize that. And you really should be doing these calculations with the calculator you're taking into the exam. You know, you can't take your cell phone in. And I know that 80% of you are probably doing this on your cell phone right now. But you really, I would encourage you to use your calculator that you're going to be using in the exam. And use the simplest, just buy the simplest calculator you can buy. You can just go into the dollar store. That's what I did. For a $3 calculator, it had everything you need. It had a, and just make sure there is a percent sign on that calculator and a uh, square root key. Those are the two things you need for these exams. So anyway, 17 plus 15, hit the percent key, hopefully 19.55 kilowatts or 19.55 pops up. Um, if it doesn't, like I said, hit 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 the equal sign and see if it pops up. If you have a Casio calculator, this ain't going to work. And I would not even use a Casio calculator for this particular exam. Casio calculators work on margins, and it is a, a whole it's a whole new presentation to talk about margins and why when you hit a percent key on a Casio calculator, you get a totally uh, a number that you're not going to be able to use on this exam. So if you're at a Casio, I want you to consider buying a different type of calculator. Otherwise, you got to figure out what 15% of 17 is, and then you got to add it to 17, and then that just makes it, uh, it, it, get, it, there's just more room for error there. Okay, hopefully that wasn't too complicated for you guys. Uh, all right, so let's let's go on. Uh, so we've got we took care of column C. Let's talk about column A and column B. Okay, so in this scenario, we're going to use column A and column B, and we're going to say instead of those 15 kilowatt ranges, we decided that these units were going to get a two kilowatt cooktop and a five kilowatt oven. What will be the demand for the service and the feeders? And I want you to look at note three. Okay, so if you look at note three, it'll tell you that you've got to figure out the um, the appliances that are um, up between between one and three quarter and three and a half. The ones that that, that are for column A, you got to do those separate. You got to do the column B one separate, and then when you get those uh, two figures you've got to add them together remember it's four units 
all right and each unit has a two kilowatt cooktop and a five kilowatt oven and I want to know what will be the demand for the service and the feeders so with that in mind all right um, hit the pause button and come back and and uh, do calculation come back and see uh, see how you did okay did you get 15.28 let's take a look so we did our cooktops all right because those were out of column a at two kilowatts all right so two kilowatts times four now remember there that was a, this was a four unit residential apartment building it was eight kilowatts altogether for those uh, uh, appliances eight times 66 percent we looked in column a it was 66 percent we got 5.28 okay great then we did our ovens they were five kilowatt and there was four of them again so it was 20. we look at column b what's our uh, percentage 50 so we take our 20 times 50 percent which is 10 so we add the cooktops and the ovens to get uh, together 5.28 plus 10 15.28 is your uh, is your total for those okay and if you can do this much calculation on this table 220.55 you're going to really have it nailed now like i said I'll, I'll have another presentation later which will go get a little more complicated where you've got different values of your uh of your column c you're over 12 over 12 kilowatt that can be a little more complicated but i don't really think you're going to get that that question um and then we'll also talk about the branch circuits as well which gets a little more complicated but this is your basics and this is really what you need make sure you got this down all right this has been jack sheffield jack the exam guy i appreciate your